our environment 15.1 what happens when we add our waste to the environment hello students welcome to today's class of our environment probably we might hear often about the word environment now and then in the present class let us learn how various factors in the environment interact with each other and how we impact the environment living organisms like plants animals and on earth lives in different surroundings with interaction among themselves and also with interaction of non living things like air water and land Human beings depends on resources of land which consists of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen in the form of coal, oil, gas, etc. We also depend on resources of soil and water. The resources that are used by human beings improve our lifestyle. In your earlier class 9 You have learned how different materials are cycled in the environment in separate biogeochemical cycles. In these cycles, essential nutrients like nitrogen, carbon, oxygen and water are changed from one form to another. In the present class, let us learn how human activities affect these cycles. In our routine daily activities, we are producing a lot of waste materials. Can you name some of them? Yes, you're right. They may be plastic material or papers, spoiled food, vegetable peels, tea leaves, milk packets, broken footwear, empty medicine bottles, torn clothes, as many as we can say. Do you know what happens when throw the waste materials away? Let us find it by performing an activity. Let us collect different waste materials from home as we listed some examples above. Make a pit in the garden and bury all the waste material in it or else collect all material in an old bucket and bury with 15 cm of soil keep this material in moist and observe for 15 day interval now take the soil and observe which material have changed their form and structure after a long period there you can find some of them had started decomposing and some remains without any change in their form In our earlier lesson life processes we have learned that food we take is digested by various enzymes in our body then do you ever think why cannot we eat and digest coal because the enzymes in our body are specific in their action specific enzymes are required for the breakdown of a particular substance hence neither we cannot eat them nor do we get energy from them In the same way, human-made materials like plastics, glass bottles, etc., will not be broken down by the action of bacteria or any other saprophytes. Instead of natural process, some physical processes like heat and pressure are required to break down them. Substances that are broken down by biological process of biological or microbial action are called biodegradable waste. example wood paper and leather substances that are not broken down by biological or microbial action are called non biodegradable wastes example plastic substances and mineral wastes 15.2 ecosystem what are its components now let us discuss about ecosystem what is meant by ecosystem As we learned earlier, living organisms like plants, animals and human beings on earth lives in different surroundings with interaction among themselves and also with interaction of non-living things like air, water and land. Why the interaction between living and non-living occurs? 
the interaction of organisms with non-living constituents of environment not only helps them to survive but also to maintain a balance in nature. Such interaction is called as ecosystem. The ecosystem consists of two components. They are biotic components, abiotic components. Biotic components Biotic components include living organism. Abiotic components includes all physical factors like temperature, rainfall, wind, soil, minerals, organic substances like carbohydrates, proteins, etc. Inorganic substances like carbon dioxide, hydrogen, etc. For example, Garden consists of different types of plants and animals which survive by interaction with each other. Hence, garden is an ecosystem. Some other examples of ecosystem are forests, ponds, lakes, crop fields, etc. In our earlier class, we have learned Based on the method of sustenance or livelihood the organisms obtain from environment, they are classified as producers, consumers and decomposers. Producers are the organisms which can synthesize their food on their own by the process photosynthesis. Example, all green plants, blue-green algae, etc. Consumers are the organisms which depend on producers either directly or indirectly by feeding on other consumers. Consumers are classified as carnivorous, omnivorous parasites. Do you ever think what happens if an organism die? For example, if we don't clean the aquarium with fish and plants for many days. Then the organism die, the microorganisms which includes bacteria, fungi, etc. breaks down the dead remains and waste products of an organism. Here, the microorganisms are decomposers which break down the complex organic substance into simple inorganic substance. These simple inorganic substances go into soil and are used by plants for its processes. The garbage, dead plants and animals are decomposed by decomposers which involves in the natural replenishment of the soil. Generally, the groups of organisms are dependent on other organisms for feeding. For example, plants are eaten by pests, pests are eaten by frogs, Frogs are eaten by snakes, etc. In this way, series of organisms depends on one another for feeding. 15.2.1 Food Chains and Webs In our earlier session, we learned that an organism depends on one another in series for feeding. This series of organisms at various biotic levels form as a food chain. Each level or step of the food chain form as a trophic level. There are four trophic levels. The first trophic level is with autotrophs. They are also called as producers and will be available to next level organisms as food. Example, plants. The second trophic level is heterotrophs are also called as consumers. Example, grasshopper. The third trophic level is primary consumers are also called as herbivorous. Example, frog. The fourth trophic level is secondary consumer are also called as carnivorous. Example, snake. The fifth trophic level is tertiary consumer or also called as larger carnivorous, example eagle. Thus, interaction among various components of environment involves flow of energy from one component to another. As we learned earlier, the energy from autotrophs is transferred to heterotrophs and to decomposers. Thus, it forms as a food chain. 
as we learnt in our previous chapter sources of energy when energy changes from one form to another form some energy is lost which cannot be used the green plants on earth capture 1% of energy from sunlight and converts into food energy when the green plants are eaten by primary consumers some energy is lost to the environment some goes into digestion and some in doing work and the rest goes to reproduction and growth an average 10% of energy from food will be available for next level of consumers therefore 10% of energy is taken as the average amount of organic matter that is reaches the next level of consumers since less energy is available for the next level of consumers food chains generally consists of only 3 or 4 steps so little usable energy remains after four trophic levels generally each organism is eaten by two or more other kinds of organisms which in turn are eaten by several other organisms hence the relationship of food chain are shown as a series of branching lines called a food web thus from the energy flow diagram we can find the flow of energy is unidirectional the energy that is captured by the autotrophs does not go back to the solar input and the energy which passes to the herbivores does not come back to the autotrophs as we already learned in ninth lesson water gets polluted in the same way pollution occurs in food chain also the main cause of pollution in food chain is usage of several pesticides and chemicals to protect crops from pests and diseases these chemicals are washed into water and soil which are in turn absorbed by plants along with minerals and water and also by aquatic animals and aquatic plants as these chemicals are not degradable they are accumulated gradually at each trophic level this phenomenon is called as biological magnification the chemical residues in grains vegetables and even in meat cannot wash by any means how do our activities affect the environment have you ever think how do our activities affect the environment as we are also an integral part of our environment the activities made by us in the environment will affect us too So now let us look at some of the environmental problems like depletion of ozone layer and waste disposal etc Ozone layer and how it is getting depleted Do you know how the ozone layer is getting depleted Three atoms of oxygen formed as ozone We all know oxygen is essential for all aerobic forms of life whereas ozone is a deadly poison to the fact at the higher levels of atmosphere ozone performs an essential function by shielding the surface of the earth from ultraviolet or uv radiation from the sun the ultraviolet radiation of sun are highly damaging to organisms for example it causes skin cancer in human beings actually ozone is a product of ultraviolet radiation from the atmosphere which acts on oxygen molecule the higher energy uv radiations break some molecular oxygen o2 into free oxygen atoms o these atoms then combine with the molecular oxygen to form ozone the amount of ozone in the atmosphere suddenly started decreasing in 1980s the cause of decrease in ozone is due to usage of synthetic chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons which are used as refrigerants and in fire extinguishers 
In 1987, the United Nations Environment Program (UNEP) made an agreement to freeze chlorofluorocarbons production. The second environmental problem is waste disposal. As our lifestyle has improved, a lot greater amounts of waste material will be generated. Do you know how do we manage the garbage that is produced by us? Changes in our attitude has made us in increased use of disposables and packaging which results wastage. The wastage made is non-biodegradable. Can you imagine how it will impact our environment? Some of preventive measures help us save our environment. Well friends, this is all about our environment and environmental issues. Hope you have learned many interesting things and how to be a part to protect our environment.